Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Amanda and today we are here with our third part of things that I wish I knew as a beginner artist. If you haven't seen the other two, I'll leave them in the iCards and you don't have to look at these in any certain order. So continue to watch this one and you can go and watch the other two after. I haven't put them in an order or anything like that. So I'm going to tell you five other things that I wish I knew as a beginner. So let's happen. Let's happen and on. Let's Wow. Can you tell that I am pre-recording because, wow. Anyway, so the first thing that I want to tell you about is that you should not be scared to try things. As a beginner artist, we are scared to try things, but I think we should look at it in the opposite way. So instead of being scared to try things, be excited to try things. Be excited to learn about how to do certain things in art, how to use certain mediums, how to draw certain things. A lot of the time people say, oh, I'm too scared to start this drawing in case I ruin it. But who cares if you ruin it? It's fine. Nobody has to see it. And even if you do show it, then it will show people that not everything is perfect. It needs practice and you need to be able to understand certain things to be able to draw certain things and it's fine. Yes, you may have wasted a bit of paper and some supplies, but that's all right. Those are those are replaceable. You can buy more. Like I said, it, you can keep it to yourself and the only way to learn how to do something the way that you want to do it is to try and do it and then learn from your mistakes. So you will make mistakes if you don't try and do things regularly. You will do things that you know are wrong, but then you can try again. I have a simple example for this. The other day, I don't think I have I said this. I might have said this, but maybe you haven't heard me. But anyway, the other day I drew a portrait, well, a little face in my sketchbook, and I didn't like the way that it came out, but I wasn't scared to try it because I knew that I could just draw it straight away again and try and make it better the second time and it was better the second time and if I drew it the third time it would have been even better so you don't have to be scared to try different things if you want to try and learn how to use a certain medium but you're too scared to try it in case you look like you wreck the supplies or whatever why are you even bothering <laughs> like I don't get being scared to try I don't get the fear of the first sketchbook page I don't get any of the fear because you're not going to hurt anybody doing this and you're not going to hurt yourself. You might, your ego might, might get hurt a little bit, but other than that, you're not going to physically or emotionally hurt yourself by trying something that you're scared of. You're just going to learn from it and be able to do it better the next time you do it. Number two is the fact that art is a very long journey and you don't have to know exactly what you want to do with your art straight away. It will come to you eventually. And it may change as well. When I was first starting out in art, I really thought that I needed to know exactly what my art was for, why I was drawing it, who I was drawing it for, if I was going to be a professional artist, and then what kind of profession was I going to be in. In fact, when I was younger, I thought that the only profession to do with art was to do fine art and get into museums. And that's how naive and <laughs> closed off my mind was. But Obviously, I learned later on that art has a lot of different types of jobs and you can do a lot with it as well. You can obviously do books and you can do music, uh, music, you can do, well, you could, you could do album covers, you could do the book covers, you could do book illustration, like I just said, because I'm repeating myself. <laughs> you could do, I was going to say children's illustration then, you know, that's the same as book illustration. Oh my goodness. Anyway. You could do uh, concept art, art for movies. You could just draw for yourself and sell your work. You could do instructional art, teach people how to draw. There is so much jobs that you can do in art and you don't even have to do it as a job. You can just do it as a hobby and you don't have to figure it out right away. In fact, it's almost impossible to figure out what you like and what you know unless you've tried it. So experiment, play with the mediums that you know, draw, learn, just have fun, follow your dreams, 
change your dreams. <laughs> I'm getting a bit soppy now, but basically don't worry if you're already 18, 19, 20, 21, 50 and you don't know what you want to do with your art if you're just a beginner. Um, even if you're not just a beginner, I still don't know exactly what I want to come out of my art, but it's not important. What's important is that you start and you figure it out along the way. You don't have to figure it out right now. Number three is something that I really wish I knew when I was younger and that is that the best way to get better is to just practice and to just draw and it doesn't matter how bad it's going to be when you first start, the more you do it the better you'll get and I don't know why people don't understand this about art. Anything that you do you have to do multiple times to get better at it. If you want to learn how to play the guitar, you're not going to just be able to pick up the guitar and know exactly how to do it straight away. You're not going to be able to pick up cooking and know exactly how to do it straight away. And the same goes for football or like other sports or any sort of skill that you need to learn. You're not going to know how to do it straight away. And practice does not make perfect, but it does make better. The only way to get better in art is practice. I tweeted this out the other day and people were loving it because it's just something that a lot of younger artists, not even younger artists, but beginner artists expect is that they don't have to practice and they just know how to do it straight away. And there's some secret magic formula that all of the artists that know how to draw well know and are keeping from you. But I assure you there is no secret cult of artists that know how to art to art better than you. There are ways and things that you must learn and do before you can become a great artist and practice is the best way. And my other tip, my fourth tip is to go along with that saying that repetition is invaluable when it comes to drawing well. Like I said in my previous point about not being scared to try things, if you repeat what you just drew but take into account the flaws of the drawing and improve on them, that is how you will get better. If you draw something, say a body and it turns out terrible and you don't want to ever draw bodies again because it's so bad and you go on to draw other things and then you come back to drawing a body, it will probably be just as bad or worse. <laughs> it's not going to be better because you haven't you haven't drawn it again. You don't you don't have it ingrained in your memory. There's no muscle memory there. You, your hand does not compute. Your brain does not compute. You need to practice and practice and repeat and repeat and repeat until you get it in your brain and that's how you do it. Um, I've noticed that with me learning the way that I learn, I don't know if this is for every artist or if it's just me because I'm unfortunate enough to have this trait, but if I draw something, a subject, say food for example, if I draw food and I keep drawing food and keep drawing food, same subject over and over again uh, and I get better at it and I'm amazing at it and then I'm like wow I'm pretty good at this but then I go on to a different subject for a while, I've forgotten everything. I'm I'm as bad as drawing, drawing at a as a toddler, like I can't draw that thing again. I've got to learn from the beginning and that's what bugs me the most. But I don't know if that's just me because I'm rubbish at remembering how to do things and it just stores all this information in a different compartment in my brain and I just can't access it or whether this is just a artist thing. If this happens to you, please tell me or if you are one that once you've got it in your brain and you know how to draw it, that's it, you know how to draw it. Because honestly, there's been times where I've been so happy with my drawings, I'd be like, oh my god, I've got it, I know how to draw it. And then I go away and I do something else and then I come back and I'm like, what happened? Where did all my skill go? I don't know, because it's gone. <laughs> so repetition is definitely a good thing to do. And the longer you can do it and not get bored, the better, because the better you will get. And number 15 is a very common one, but I just wanted to reiterate it because I wanted to make sure that you knew that this was a thing and that it wasn't a very good thing to do and that is comparing yourself to other artists is bad. I used to compare myself to other artists all the time. Why can she draw like that? Why can he sell that 
artwork for this amount of money. I could draw better than that. Or I can't draw better than that. I'm rubbish at art. I never want to draw again. Blah, 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 blah. Get a grip. Get a grip. Don't compare yourself to other people. Everybody, everybody in the artist world is at a different stage in their learning process and in their artistic journey. You can only compare yourself to you. Old sketchbooks, for example. Go through your old sketchbooks. Compare yourself to your old self. Say, right, she, that old self, or he, or they, or them, or whoever, I was rubbish here. This is what I need to do improve. I know how to do that now because I've learned. My brain function has caught up. My hand needs to catch up now. Um, Or, wow, I did that very well back then and now I can't do it. So what do I need to do to get back to that stage? Compare your work to yourself. Compare yourself to your work. Just learn from yourself and don't compare yourself to other artists. It is really bad. Obviously, you can take inspiration from other artists and in a positive way. Wow, she draws amazingly. I want to draw exactly like that person. That person can draw exactly like the way that I want to draw. I'm going to work towards drawing like that and see where it takes me. So yes, inspiration and comparing yourself are separate things and they should be used. Well, one of them should be the comparing part, no, but the inspiration part, yes. But do not compare yourself. Take inspiration, take the ways that they draw and apply it to yourself. But don't copy, obviously. We all know this. Don't copy. Just take inspiration from different artists and mix your own pot of stew, basically, or your own potion, your own recipe, your own soup, whatever you wish to make. Uh, take an ingredient from one artist, pop it in the pot. Take an ingredient from another artist, pop it in the pot. And just keep doing that until you find out exactly the way that you want to draw. But again, I will say, do not compare. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any tips on things that you wished that you knew as an artist in the beginning, then please do tell. Uh, Thank you so much for your support. Remember and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and also hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of all the videos that I post and I will see you next time. Bye!